Hi, I'm Rose. Dr. Norman Rosenthal is best known for his research in seasonal affect disorder. He's a clinical professor in Georgetown University and is one of the best known doctors in America. He's here today to talk with us about his latest book, Supermind, how to boost performance and live a better life through transcendental meditation. So we're here with Dr. Rosenthal. Dr. Rosenthal, what was the inspiration behind Supermind? Well, when I finished my last book on transcendental meditation called Transcendence, I thought that I'd written everything I had to say. Mm -hmm. It was and is a book about how transcendental meditation can help people with all kinds of difficulties. But I personally continued to meditate and after some duration of more meditating, twice a day, I began to feel changes in my daily consciousness. And so did many of the patients to whom I had recommended Transcendental Meditation. I would be working with my patients and I would feel myself slipping into that very pleasant transcendent state, even while I was actively engaged in therapy. And I thought, wow, mm. this is so interesting. This is so important. And that led me to the exploration and the adventure that this new book, Supermind, represents. Oh, interesting. Now, you talk about consciousness, and I think people get confused between mindfulness and consciousness. What exactly is consciousness? Well, we know three states of consciousness, all of us. We know when we're awake, we know that we sleep, and we know that we dream. Those are distinct states of consciousness. Each one is different from the other. And if somebody had said to me, you know, there are other states of consciousness, ways of being, experiencing oneself in the world, I wouldn't have actually believed them. Right. But having I can see why. actually experienced them and heard that others have and seen their effects, I now am aware that there are other states of consciousness that one can access by different means. And I'm not talking drugs now. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking altered mm. consciousness. I'm talking awakened consciousness because this is consciousness that is a natural function of our minds. And that's what I personally experienced through continuing to meditate with TM and saw in other people as well. When you start to meditate by this particular method of transcendental meditation, and I should tell you a little bit what that is. It's simply going and learning. You're not going to learn it through my book. My book is an explanation of mm -hmm. what it'll do and what it can do. But it has to be taught personally. When you learn how to do this practice of transcendental meditation, after a little while, while you're meditating, you go into a state called transcendental consciousness or transcendence. And what that simply is, is a very pleasant state when you are conscious and alert, but there's nothing specific that you're thinking about. So that's very unusual mm -hmm. to be aware and alert, but not to have any content to your consciousness. Yes. And at the same time as you're aware and alert, you're also very calm. And it feels so very pleasant. Your body is relaxed. So I think it's legitimate to say this is a distinct, separate kind of consciousness mm. while we meditate. It's not like waking. It's not like sleeping. It's not like dreaming. It's different. Right. And then this is the real novel aspect of Supermind. This consciousness that you experience initially during meditation begins to infuse your daily living. And in doing so, it changes you as a person. It makes you nicer, happier, more effective, more creative, more productive. Now, if somebody was telling me this, what I'm telling you, I would say yes. And which piece of the Brooklyn Bridge would you like me to buy next? <laughs> it basically doesn't seem credible. Yeah. But what I did, I thought, well, I can't trust myself or my patients. I did a survey of more than 600 meditators. Oh, really? And I was able mm -hmm. to distill down what are the characteristics of the state of consciousness. And more important, what does it do? Because, you know, 
when you tell somebody they've got the state of consciousness, in term in hippie terms, I would say, oh, groovy baby. Yeah, and but a lot of people wouldn't go near it and continue they, the conversation in today's world. They would right? say, don't yeah. try taking it through customs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. But anyway, actually, it does a lot of concrete things. It makes you more calm. It makes you nicer. It makes life go easier. And this is what came out of the survey. So that's what the book's about. Right. And the book really, you know, explains the science behind mm -hmm. and, and, and takes you through steps on how to achieve these states. Yes. Without necessarily teaching you the practice, which needs to be taught in a different way. Um, now, a lot of celebrities do TM. Um, and you interviewed several for the book, or one or two, and I know Hugh Jackman was one of them. What did, what did Hugh Jackman have to say about TM? Well, it was a wonderful interview, and wonderful not because he's such a star, which he is. You know, he's mm -hmm. famous for good reason. I mean, how many people can Everybody act, loves Hugh Jackman. dance, yep. <laughs> and sing as well as he can? And he's funny. And funny. But the authenticity of the man just shone through in the interview. And as you'll see, because I sort of transcribed the thing, and what he said perhaps that struck me more than anything is the authenticity that it's helped him access. How to be the real person that he really is. Because, you know, a lot of us, put on masks, mm -hmm. not only for other people, but we put on masks for ourselves. We don't want to look in and say, who are we really? Mm -hmm. And that's what really he found was so amazing. It's, and great, it's a great interview. He, thank you. Thank you. And in fact, uh, it was really something that moved me personally Next and that I've thought about it. I'd like it. to be there. <laughs> Because I could see, I mean, it's, it's, it comes out in the writing how very special um, the communication was between the two, the two of you. Now, you mentioned some of the benefits of TM, which is reducing stress and um, making you happier and healthier. I mean, how specifically is that happening? Why does it happen? Well, I think what happens every day is that we are stressed multiple times. And each time we're stressed, there's a whole system of our nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system. It's fight or flight mm -hmm. that surges. Our blood pressure can spike. We can get turbulence in the blood as our blood pressure spikes. And we can develop arterial problems. We can develop, over time, cardiac and brain-related blood vessel problems. Mm -hmm. Now, what TM does is it puts a brake mm -hmm. on these spikes. It's what I think of as a surge protector that protects us against the daily surges that happen all the time. That's a great description. That's a great, great description. Now, you also mentioned that meditation can boost creativity and job performance. How? Well, I think one thing that meditation does, TM does, is it helps us to take risks. I've got a wonderful story. Megan Fairchild is a prima ballerina in the New York City Ballet, and it's such an accomplishment to get to that level. But when we talked, she spoke about her perfectionism. Oh. She was good with dancing, but if she had to present from the stage or talk or sing, that was unthinkable. Okay. It would was, she freeze up and just get was nervous? Outside and her comfort stressed. zone, okay. she would freeze mm -hmm. up. Then she started to meditate, and that changed everything. Mm. She began to be willing to take risks, make mistakes, learn from her mistakes, realize that mistakes are just steps in learning to become a fuller, more creative, more productive person. So that when the call went out that they needed a new actor who could also dance, for the Broadway musical on the town, unthinkably, she put her hat in the ring. Mm, great. And the story was she got the role in the audition room, which is virtually oh, unheard really? of. You know, mm -hmm. if they say, we'll call you back, sure. mm -hmm. you're doing well. But to actually be given the role, and she said she couldn't have imagined doing that. That's just one of so many examples 
of risk taking that is key to creativity. Mm. But there's more. Creativity means ideas popping up from unexpected places in the mind. That typically happens when you meditate and after you meditate. And many creative people, whether they're in the realm of finance or the arts or sports, say that these ideas come to them while they're meditating or after they're meditating. Yeah, I agree. I get, um, when I'm in the zone, right, and people will sometimes refer to it as the zone, they're, the messages, they're just clear. It's just, if there's a problem that I have, you know, suddenly a solution will, will appear right. um, and I'll be able to see the situation, you mm -hmm. know, differently. So it, it definitely does work. I'm an avid believer um, in meditation. Now, is there a, a meditation that you'd like to share with us? Now, when you say a meditation, well, here's one that I'd like to share. Let's just, you know, they, they don't like any dead time on the air. But let's just for 15 seconds, just let ourselves be still and quiet and just feel like what that feels like. The unthinkable just happened. Mm -hmm. We gave a little pause at a time when people expect rat-a-tat-tat yeah. continuity. And that's a little taste of what it's like to take your 20 minutes and say, this is 20 minutes that I'm going to spend with myself. Somebody earlier today was saying, I have a hard time getting to all the things on my to-do list. And TM is just one more thing on my to-do list. And I said, you know, why it's not hard for me is it's not part of my to-do list. It's part of my I want to do list. Because to-do list is like some voice saying, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. Just reinforcing that fight or flight, right? Reinforcing mm -hmm. that it's a chore. But it doesn't feel like a chore. It feels like a little gift, a little treat that I'm giving myself twice a day. And that little gap that I gave, I don't know how it'll come out when you actually look at it on the screen, was just to give you a little taste of what quiet feels like. It's inner quiet, but it's facilitated mm -hmm. by a mantra that we get, that we're taught to access in a very effortless way, mm -hmm. that takes us into this zone or state that you were talking about, that's so pleasant and that then begins to infuse our personalities and come out in everything we do, whether it's our personal relationships, whether it's our work, whether it's even our decision making. Mm. Should we continue on this job that we don't like anymore? Or should we venture out, maybe do something a little risky, but that might make us so much happier? Those are all the things that begin to get influenced when our consciousness changes. Right. Well, I mean, I know personally, I feel, um, you know, this wave of tranquility when I hear silence. You know, it just, it makes me happy. <laughs> and we don't give ourselves that treat <laughs> Yeah, very we really often. don't. We don't. Can you give us any tips on, um, you know, other ways to meditate throughout the workday? Yes. Well, certainly, I think you can take deep breaths. Those have been shown to be you know, very soothing. Mm. I would say, you know, we hardly allow ourselves even a one or two minute pause during the working day. Let's just take six deep breaths and feel what does that do to our bodies. And so we'll breathe in six deep breaths and you can feel the slowing down mm. in the audience. Mm. And it's funny, but six deep breaths, it feels like such a long time because we fill our days with chatter, whether it's our cell phones, whether we're accessing our voicemail, chatter, 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 because our cell phones let us stay in touch with right. the internet even, and other people right. even all the, day Even long. the emails, sure. I mean, I'm emails. saying it in my mind as I'm answering. And I think we've lost the ability to just be with ourselves. And so any way that we are able to be with ourselves, maybe go for a walk in a natural setting, quiet walk, 
watch the changing seasons, watch the birds flying overhead. These are all wonderful things to do. And then a specialized thing that falls into that category is transcendental meditation. Well, thank you, Dr. Rosenthal. This has been a pleasure. I've learned so much. It's can't been a wait. pleasure for me too. Thank you for having me on your wonderful show. I can't wait to finish the book. Um, to find out more, you can visit Dr. Rosenthal at his website at normanrosenthal.com. And to find out more about Transcendental Meditation, you can also visit the David Lynch Foundation and the TM Organization.